Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of You Got This Equestrian, the Equestrian Confidence Series with Red Bear Equestrian. I'm Haley and I'm so excited to have you guys here today. So today was going to be filmed out in the field. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi down there turns out it's not great. So we brought the field into the office and I've been playing around with a few backgrounds. So if I move to the side, you can even see horses behind me. Um, and how cozy is this? So these are our ice hoodies. And I usually wear our ice hoodies quite true to size and they're slightly higher necked, which I love. And they're a little bit oversized anyway, but this one, if I stand up, you might be able to see another horse there. Um, this is massively, you can't see very well because I've put daft backgrounds on, but massively oversized. It's amazing. It's so comfy. So I've sized up two sizes here and this is the pink. And I absolutely love it. I think all my ice hoodies are going to be this big from now on. It is the coziest thing. Um, so as I said, welcome to You Got This Equestrian. And I cannot believe we are now done so many episodes of this. So if this is the first one you're catching, head over to the website, go to blog and You Got This Equestrian, scroll back to episode one and go check out why this all started, why this is such a big thing for me and what it's all about. So there are a mix of solo videos like this with the odd hint and tip in. There are some interviews and chatting to other riders and there is also um, some blog content in there as well. So it's a mix for you. And as well, adding to the range is the You Got This Equestrian Clothing line. So there is the You Got This hoodie and T-shirt, which has just been released in a new aqua colour. And also something else coming to You Got This range very, very soon. So look out for that. But today I want to talk to you about the stories we tell ourselves. So over the last few weeks, um, I've been chatting to various riders because we've just moved house and I've got chatting to lots of other horsey people and um, not just around me but slightly further afield as well and it's been lovely to get to know so many of them but one thing that's cropped up um, when I was chatting to somebody the other day was about the stories that we tell ourselves and how we let these hold ourselves back so I was talking about the fact that one of our horses um, always finds one particular road around here really exciting. I've got no idea why. Um, but we were chatting about where that could have come from and we were talking about you know, some of the things that she chooses to do and not to do with her horse and the reasons why. And it became really apparent that they're the things that we tell ourselves. So by that I mean that quite often things will have happened once, maybe two, three times to us, or we will know somebody that they've happened to. And we decide to form a belief around what is going to happen, why we should or shouldn't do something, what's going to happen if we do something. And what happens within our subconscious is the more we tell it something, and we tell it something with real conviction and emotional connection, the more our subconscious believes it. OK, so some of you might know about manifesting and law of attraction, and that's how all that sort of stuff works as well. But that's the way your subconscious works. It cannot differentiate what you tell it as reality from what is actual reality. So if you tell your subconscious something with such absolute conviction and emotional connection, it believes it to be true and it will seek out evidence to prove to you that that is definitely true. If you think about if you wake up on a morning something bad happens and you decide that bad things come in threes good things come in threes 99 percent of the time bad things come in threes and good things come in threes and the reason for that is because we are so emotionally invested in that because that's what we've been told happens and um, that we tell our subconscious that that's what's going to happen so our subconscious will look out for other things to show us evidence that we wouldn't normally have connected with all of that because it's looking out for proof that what you've told it is true. And it's the same thing with when we're riding our horses. Say, for example, um, when I was talking about the lane down the road, which mine gets really excited down, it's because we've decided that that's what happens. So he's been down there a couple of times, got a little bit excited, and we've decided that that's what will happen. So we are all projecting that energy the minute he starts out on that road. And then he just carries through with what we're projecting onto him because we've already decided in ourselves that's what's going to happen. So we start acting as if. 
it's the same with somebody I was chatting to about some things that have been happening to her when she's been to events and to shows. She's arriving at the day expecting for that to happen at some point. So that is always happening at some point because at some point when that hasn't happened, she starts projecting the energy onto her horse and all of a sudden he starts doing exactly what she is asking him to do, but not in a direct way. Hopefully that makes sense. So a lot of the time, this is all about stories that we tell ourselves of things that are going to happen. Sometimes writing this stuff down, you know, writing down why you think it's going to happen, what evidence you have that that's going to happen, you know, trying to reframe that because a lot of the time we don't have the evidence we believe we do to substantiate these thoughts and these limitations that we're putting on ourselves. A lot of the time these can be reframed and could be readdressed and we can come up with solutions. So if your horse is acting up in a show, for example, like we were just saying, actually, why is he doing that? What was the root cause of that? What evidence have you got apart from the fact you think he's going to do it? You know, what is the cause? What can you do to change that? What could you change in your routine? What could you change with having somebody else there? What could you change with where you tack up or untack or, you know, what it might be what you're wearing or whatever the thing might be that you can change so another example so i did it myself okay so i had and the reason i started this this video series blog series and if you head back to episode one you'll see the full story so i had a really bad horse driving accident nine and a bit years ago now and um, and i have it in my head that when i ride on the horse I'm not as confident a rider as what I normally am. And it takes me a little while to build my confidence in them. So I get on a new horse and I'm naturally a little bit more tense, a little bit more anxious until I get to know them, until I relax into it and then everything's well with the world again. Yet that doesn't happen with my own. And the reason I told myself that's what happens is because that's the horse I had an accident on wasn't mine. It was one I wasn't familiar with. And it's a story that I've told myself and it's a belief that's held me back because we've on and off looked for horses before for new horses and I've always come up with an excuse as to why we can't get one no problem with buying them for my daughter and once I know them be riding them <laughs> but it's really held me back from being able to get another horse for me and being able to go back into competing and all of the stuff that I really want to do and so after my conversations this week and we started looking again. And I was really thinking about what I wanted and what I thought I wanted. So what I thought I wanted, because the stories I told myself and the fact that this was, you know, I was going to be nervous when I first got on this horse and I was going to have to build up my bonds and then we were only just going to go hacking because, you know, I'm older now than what I was and... You know, maybe I won't bounce as well. Not that I bounced great before. Again, if you go back to episode one, you'll find out what happened. <laughs> but, you know, all of those things that we tell ourselves. And so I've been looking for this, like, nice, lovely, bomb-proof plod. Actually, that's not really what I wanted. What I wanted was something really safe and really sane, don't get me wrong. But I also wanted something that could be a little bit more forward, that I could jump with, that I could... You know, I keep saying I'm going to try my hand at dressage. Let's see if that ever happens. Um, it's something I've never, I love watching, but I've never had the patience to learn myself. But I keep saying I'm going to, to watch this space. So I'd love one with the potential to do that. I'd love one that I could go back to competing once the kids are a bit older. And so I made the decision that actually I'm going to go for the horse that I wanted rather than the one I thought I wanted. And the way that I'm going to be able to move past that is by going and riding some different horses and ones that I don't know on a regular basis so that it's not allowing me to ride one and build a bond with it. Every time I go, well, I'm going to be thrown onto something different. And that's going to be my new reality, that actually I can move past that stuff. And it is the break in the story that I've been telling myself for so long. <clears throat> and I have got one that we're going to go see hopefully in a week and a half so I'm very excited about that there might be a new river model coming soon um, but just think about the stories that you're telling yourself that are holding you back 
and where they actually come from and how you can reframe those and move past them because our horses are meant to be a pleasure they're meant to be you know our escape they're meant to be the most happy place to be and so often we hold ourselves back from allowing us to be as happy as we could be from allowing us to do the things that we really really want to do especially as we grow up you know so many of us as kids used to hop on a horse and ride it up bareback with only a rope around its neck or not even a rope around its neck you know you think nothing of tearing towards a jump not knowing if you'd get over it or cantering off down tracks and galloping off down tracks and not worrying if the horse was suitable or if it was going to spook a bit or if your tack was properly on or if you had tack you know if your boots were done up all of these things that as we get older we start to panic about more now part of them is safety yeah absolutely but some of it is because we start to put these limitations around what we should do with our horses how we should behave how our horses should behave how they will behave what's going to happen next and we start to overthink things and that's natural as we get older we do start to overthink things more the more you start to overthink these things the more of these stories and these limitations you put in place so think through the ones that are really holding you back how can you reframe them where's that story come from and how can you rewrite that story because like I said, our horses are meant to be so much fun. They're meant to be a pleasure. And sometimes we hold back from how pleasurable it could be. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you know, some of this has resonated with you and you understand where some of your beliefs have come from and where you can move forward and reframe those and keep a lookout for the new you got this equestrian piece of kit that's coming out to go with the hoodie and the t-shirt keep an eye on the page who knows when there will be a new horse joining these two that are behind me um, go check out the ice hoodies two sizes too big is definitely the way to wear these um, and if you would love to be a guest in one of the interview episodes on You've Got This Equestrian, and chat with me and share your equestrian experience, no matter what that is. Um, you know, we've had all sorts of riders and non-riders on. Please just drop me a DM and, yeah, just ask, because we are always looking out for new and fabulous equestrians to have on the series and just chat about their life as equestrian and their experience. So I will catch up with you all next Friday. Have an awesome weekend in the sun with your horses and take care.